gentlemen. Good afternoon. My name is Raymond Martinez. I am the Deputy Chief of Protocol. And it is a great pleasure to welcome you to the Benjamin Franklin Room of the State Department today for the swearing in of Jean Allen Kretz as the next United States Ambassador to Libya. Partner, uh, that Libya can indeed undertake some of those changes. 
Uh, we also want to see Libya open up to the world. One of the most uh, interesting discussions that I've had when I was in Libya with uh, both uh, Colonel Gaddafi and uh, with the Foreign Minister was the desire of Libyans to have their students study here in the United States. And it was once a time when lots and lots of Libyans studied in the United States. Jane, I hope that one of the things that we'll be able to achieve is to bring uh, more Libyan students uh, to be here and to take some American students to Libya as well. Um, it is uh, the case, too, that Libya has made good choices uh, in renouncing terrorism and in renouncing weapons of mass destruction. And uh, it's been uh, an extraordinary coming out. I sat yesterday in the Security Council with my Libyan uh, colleague. Uh, Libya is a member of the Security Council. And uh, ironically, uh, maybe uh, historically ironically, uh, we voted together a, a UN Security Council resolution on piracy. Now, since uh, <laughs> Secretary of State Thomas Jefferson started his career as the Secretary of State fighting pirates uh, in this general geographic uh, area of uh, Libya, I feel that we've come full circle. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson came here to fight pirates. I'm leaving fighting pirates. <laughs> Thank you for honoring us with your presence today. I want to reiterate my 
profound gratitude to you and the President for your trust and confidence in nominating me for this position. Fully cognizant of the challenges of this historic opportunity, I will carry out my responsibilities aware that at all times I represent this great country, its people, and institutions. I would like to thank Libyan Chargé Juma Faris and staff members for joining us today on this occasion. Shirafna. I would also like to single out Ambassador Ali Ajali, who is currently on Hajj in Mecca, for the yeoman work he has done during the past years to help improve the relationship between Libya and the United States. Deputy Secretary Negro Ponte, friends, colleagues, and family. The Arabic expression, Sabar Miftah al Faraj, means patience is the key to the solution, or wisdom, depending on who you talk to. If that is the case, you should see before you a reincarnation of Job and Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> Many have stood here and said they never dreamed that they would be here. I can assure you in my case, the sentiment is real. <laughs> no matter how many times I played out this scene in my imagination, it was only recently that the possibility seemed less than remote. Even as early as February, a senior official told me that my situation was extremely dire and that I needed to begin considering other options. <laughs> I know that many of you are shocked by the mere thought that I would ever be mentioned in the same breath as Marathon. But in fact, this nomination experience has been bounded from beginning to end by marathons. In March of 2006, after running, or as my daughter prefers to say, shuffling, <laughs> the wrong marathon, I collapsed in a friend's house only to find an email cryptically saying that someone would be coming to Israel that week where I was posted and might be bringing an offer which they hoped I would seriously consider. Thirty months later, on October 30, 2008, five days after my completing or shuffling through the Marine Corps Marathon here in Washington, the final payment was deposited, which signaled the resolution of the claim settlement agreement and the beginning of the end of my personal help. <laughs> In any case, those many moments of agony and uncertainty have been completely obliterated by the ceremony today and will fade into history with huge amounts of alcohol tonight. <laughs> I, <did that. laughs> I am many times blessed today. I've had the privilege of serving this great country of ours for over 27 years. And now, what a time it will be to represent the United States after the election of Barack Obama, a milestone that continues to show the character and spirit that define this nation. The people in this room, whether they be friends from childhood, family, colleagues, or others, who I would not have had the opportunity to meet without this new title, constitute an important part of my life, and I admire by your presence as well. I would also like to thank all of the officers who served with me in many embassies during the past many years. Anyone who stands in this position would have to be a real adult not to acknowledge the help and support they received from colleagues over the years. I am here today because of them as well. Thanks also to Loretta Height and Jan Foreman from Human Service Resources who stuck it out with me, and Sharon Hardy of Presidential Appointments who vowed she would not rest until she removed me from her left to do <laughs> Bruce Brown also guided me through the intricacies of the Senate process and my assistant, Suzanne Swanson, has been worked to death during these past few weeks preparing this ceremony in my departure for post, and I will forever be in her debt. Finally, I have been blessed with a wonderful and loving family. While my mother could not travel to the ceremony, my brother Andy and his wife are here today, and I hope that this event in some small way compensates for our absences over the years. We are a true foreign service family, and my family's sense of sacrifice, adventure, and loving support culminated in this event today. My children, Gabriel and Jeffrey, grew up in Pakistan, India, Syria, Israel, and China. I believe that those experiences helped shape them into the people they are today, with their moral and ethical compasses firmly fixed, their complete lack of prejudice of any kind, and their well-developed interpersonal skills. Gabriel has taken the world of management consultancy by storm and has a wicked and naughty sense of humor. <laughs> Our zest for life is a joy to watch. Jeffrey, 
loyal, family-oriented, fun-loving, serves as a captain in the Air Force Reserves, and has honorably served his country in two combat deployments to Afghanistan. This despite our family's almost complete lack of military background. <laughs> in an interesting twist, Jeffrey arrived in Afghanistan 31 years to the day that I arrived there as a Peace Corps volunteer. He's a true patriot. Needless to say, I'm proud of both of my children and love and adore them very much. Annette is the love of my life and my partner. And this is her day as much as or perhaps even more than mine. Many of you in this room know her because she tended to your medical needs while she served as a nurse in several embassies. Those of you who know me know what I would look like and be dressed like. <laughs> <laughs> like. I could not have asked for a more loving and supportive partner in this adventure. There are four individuals I'd like to cite for the profound impact they have had on me in the way I view the role of an ambassador and how to practice the art of diplomacy. Ambassadors Richard Murphy, Dan Kurtzer, and Jim LaRocco, affectionately known in some circles as Petrino or the Godfather. <laughs> Assistant Secretary David Welsh has been my friend and colleague since the beginning. He has at times also been my chief tormentor. <laughs> During this very difficult period, I looked to him for emotional support when the nomination just wasn't going anywhere, and he was always there with warmth and support telling me, Stop acting like a wuss and act like a man. <laughs> needless, to say, needless to say, that steel my determination to go <laughs> David uh, and his core team of Jonathan Schwartz, Linda Jacobson, and Damar Halal, joined by the very competent officers of our Margaret Affairs Office, Amanda Johnson, Maggie Nardi, Stephanie Williams, and Elizabeth Hopkins, and with the support of many others at high levels, truly pulled off the diplomatic miracle. The resolution of the claims issue had bedeviled the relationship for so long, and they found a way to resolve it, marrying the old-fashioned, patient, step-by-step, -step, and personal diplomacy with hand-in-glove cooperation with the Congress, ably supported by Jen Butte Dahl and our legislative affairs team. I hope that we might find a way to memorialize as a case study the way David's team, matched by their very able uh, Libyan counterparts achieved this great success. In this day of cell phones and digital communication, they proved that face-to-face -face diplomacy is irreplaceable. <laughs> Madam Secretary, your historic visit to Libya this September and the implementation of the Claims Settlement Agreement this October marked important milestones in our relationship with Libya. Over the past five years, our bilateral relationship, as well as Libya's place in the international community, have dramatically improved. That progress began with Libya's taking the historic steps of giving up its weapons of mass destruction capability and renouncing terrorism. We now have a normalized relationship through which we can address all issues openly with each other. As ambassador, I look forward to building on this momentum in several arenas, including on counterterrorism cooperation, expanding our military to military ties, engaging in a human rights dialogue based on mutual respect, ensuring the best environment possible for furthering our commercial presence, and moving forward on exchanges between our two peoples. I am honored to lead the dedicated men and women serving at Embassy Tripoli, and as ambassador, I will commit myself to identifying the appropriate resources and infrastructure to ensure that the staff has what it needs to adequately meet the future expansion of work as the relationship grows. In closing, given the size of the crowd, I will not feel offended if people bow out of the receiving line. <laughs> Please visit us in Tripoli. God bless you all. Have a happy and healthy new year, and God bless America. Thank you.
ladies and gentlemen, for the signing of his appointment papers, Ambassador Kratz has concluded our ceremony.